What's up? What's up? Billy Carson here, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Fo forbidden. <laughs> forbidden. I call it forbidden knowledge. Right, we still have people saying this is a gang sign. I, I know. They still don't be a philosopher and all oh. this out here and throwing <laughs> gang signs. Like, it was just today. Yeah, that was No, today. guys. Like, four. Number four. Knowledge. Number four. Four. Yeah. One, two, three. Four. Four. Forbidden knowledge. Yes. Okay, yes. anyway, I'm here with the beautiful Elizabeth Hoekstra. <laughs> Hello. Hey, 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 everybody. What's up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anywho. Um, yeah, so we were just in D.C. Yeah. at the um, Huge Disclosure Pref Press Conference 2.0, and it honestly changed my perspective, changed... Um, it changed a lot, actually, just thought process in general. Um, it is not what I what I expected whatsoever. Um, just coming from a little bit about, you know, my perception of this, because I do not come from this industry. Like, I don't come from aliens, UFOs, ancient civ, any of that. I right. come from, from more like, you know, um, mental health type type mm -hmm. spaces, right? right? So this, I coming from, you know, I don't know anything about, aliens and stuff like this. I haven't really studied it. So coming from a blank mind to this, this place and learning all of this crazy stuff literally has changed my perception and trajectory of life almost. Mm -hmm. Because once you know, you have to do better. Mm -hmm. Once you become aware and conscious, you have to do better because you know better. If you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're going to be talking about, I'm interviewing you about your thoughts of, of um, Dr. Stephen Greer's recent documentary, The Lost Century. And we were able to actually see that in D.C. before the actual press conference um, that was live on, you know, mainstream news. Yeah, we had a private screening of The Lost Century, which is an amazing documentary. We're not going to, I'm going to, she's going to interview me about it, but I'm not going to give it all away. You got, you have to watch this documentary. And more importantly, you can actually come watch with us in person at a live premiere in California. And Elizabeth will give you those dates and times shortly. Yes, right? exactly. And and yeah. glory to God. This is my fiance. So, yes, yes, we are. Um, anywho, it's OK. So back to the last century. Um, there's this information, right? Everyone needs to see this. Not one person that is on this planet should miss this documentary. That's how, I mean, it, it hit my soul. I was yeah. sitting there in almost tears and you saw me. It was oh, yeah. so like, I, was, I was, oh my God, I was yeah. freezing cold and I just couldn't even move. Usually I'm shaking and, and you know, asking for, for blankets and all type of stuff. <laughs> but like, wow, yeah. like it, it, it was whew, heart, heart wrenching. It's a lot. Yes. A lot. You know, we, when we were at the disclosure, uh, 2.0, which is the National Press Club, mm -hmm. which Dr. Stephen Greer had done a little over 20 years ago, yes. the first time, which that's on Forbidden Knowledge TV, that original press club, mm -hmm. with all those former military veterans and nuclear physicists, you're talking about um, rocket Astrophys scientists, yeah. astrophysicists, all there. Yeah. These people, we had, there were people there that were in charge of the nuclear codes yeah. on our nukes. Yeah. At these flights, flights are these missile silos. They're so far out in the middle of nowhere, they call them flights. And a lot of the times it can take eight, nine, even 10 hours of driving just to get to one flight. These uh, officers would work and protect these silos, of course, against intruders. And the, um, the people who had the mission codes or the nuclear codes would be there to arm and disarm nukes. Like this has got to be the most, the hardest job to get in the world. To know the codes to arm and disarm nuclear yeah. bombs. I mean, you gotta have squeaky clean history. Your family has to have a squeaky clean history. You can't even come in contact with people that have committed crimes no. or anything or be associated with. I'm talking about the background checks are crazy, crazy. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Okay. So it's a, it's a hard job to get. It's one of the hardest jobs to get in the world. Yes. And so the reason why I'm bringing this point up is this. You have one of the toughest jobs to get. You have the codes to bombs that can destroy other countries. Yeah. That can obliterate millions, even billions of people. Mm -hmm. So when these men start speaking, yeah. you have to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore what they're saying. No. And when the guy who controls the codes to the nuke says, 
that a UFO showed up in broad daylight mm -hmm. at the flight, which is a missile silo where the nukes are housed, and then goes and deactivates yeah. the actual launch codes, mm -hmm. hacks in to the nukes, deactivates the launch codes. They don't activate them. They deactivate, deactivate them. Deactivate. Crazy. Right. And this happened many times, yes. not just once, many times at many different flights. Mm -hmm. And so when these launch officers are coming and testifying before Congress and coming to national press club conferences and saying this, we need to listen to them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for people that don't know what it is, um, what is The Lost Century by Dr. Stephen Greer? It is a documentary talking about specifically how due to the technological advances from the black budget and unacknowledged projects that have been done and ran by private corporations under contracts from government agencies to keep them hidden from the public, mm -hmm. how during that process of reverse engineering some of these downed craft from as early as the 1940s mm -hmm. have created a situation where we now own, have created technologies that can literally free the burden of mankind. We're talking about zero point energy devices. We're talking about perpetual motion devices. We're talking about uh, fresh water for everyone running everywhere. We're talking about so many incredible technologies, anti-gravity control that can literally free up the burden of mankind, that can make the world an even playing field, that can take people who are living without water and power to the next level. It could eliminate poverty overnight is what it could yes. do. Literally, and we don't need to be living in poverty. Right. People on this planet do not need to be living in poverty. The only reason that there are people living in poverty is for control and money. Mm -hmm. Control the money. Yeah, literally. That's it. And you know, when you bring clean water and electricity to places that don't have it, a lot of the diseases go away. Mm -hmm. The diseases, see, what they do now is, and it's hard to talk on this network about this stuff, but... They bring the Jabowowskis to these people in these third world countries. But when you do that, they still don't have clean water and they still don't have uh, electricity. So you, 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 you're, you're creating a situation where they're always going to be bacteria infested, virus infected. Um, and of course, there's no uh, education on cleanliness in terms of the amount of trash and litter that we see when we go to these third world countries. Yeah. With some of these places we go, there's probably. I don't know, 10, 15 tons of plastic bottles just laying in the street and inside the rivers and, and lakes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. So, but we're talking about cleaning all of that up, but the technology and the wisdom and the understanding of how to do that has been locked away. And what he's saying in this documentary is because of these unacknowledged black budget projects and the technologies, technologies that have been hoarded away from the general population, we have lost 100 years of advancement. Yeah as a civilization on this planet we from where we should be the universe right now yes. know, spaceships but unfortunately these these black ops um groups have literally kept this information suppressed and uh, even suppressed underneath government this is over government it's over over like there are levels above the above the above so it's like you know it, it's just a big crap show at the top. And, you know, this documentary is trying to expose all of it and help the people to become protected that know about all these things come out and speak the truth to the public. Yes. So yeah. they can't, they can't kill everybody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like they can't, they can't get everybody. Right. Exactly. And so, so far there has been some legislation that is allowing whistleblowers to come forward. Yeah. But also a big, huge push behind this documentary, as Elizabeth said, is to create more laws and more legislation that allows some of these whistleblowers to come forward, but not only to come forward, but to be um, completely absolved of any, uh, any, any wrongdoing for working for some of these private corporations that have engaged in some of these uh, illegitimate projects. Mm -hmm. Because as you saw at the, uh, uh, at the press club, the, the testimony of yeah. some of these people that work at some of these private corporations, mm -hmm. these former Marines and everything else, how just by seeing what was there yeah, or exactly. knowing what was there, their well, lives were completely changed. 
talk about the one the one guy right the the dad situation and the yeah. next situation because that's already out there you guys can look this up the press conference is live um that was films live and it's on dr stephen greer's youtube page you guys can go watch it so the story is already out there for those of you that don't know i mean this guy was a military guy i guess his dad marine. works for the marine um his dad works for the government his whole life he had government contracts Penner. Yes, and was a multimillionaire, his dad. Him and his dad were like this, very, very, very close to each other. And I guess um, they had went to a location and saw some stuff that they weren't supposed to see. And then the next day, tell him what happened with the dad. Um, so yeah. sad. The next day, the dad, uh, the dad confronts the son and tells him, you know, you better effing forget this ever happened, right? Because obviously they put a lot of pressure on the dad. He said, don't you ever effing talk about this again right that was the last time he heard his dad's voice that was the last time you heard his dad's voice they were close like they were close they were together all the time all yeah. the time yeah. yeah and so um he now at that point obviously he was completely distraught mm -hmm. and trying to sort and figure out like what is it that he can do um he went to a training facility he was in the marines yeah but he was working on, uh, I guess it was an inject training session, and they had rigged his his device. And the device was rigged where it actually went off at the wrong time, and it ejected him, and it didn't open, and his neck snapped and everything else. He had a broken neck. He suffered some major injuries, and the guy who saw him see what he wasn't supposed to see at their private facility was standing right there watching yeah. i think they were hoping he would die yeah well he was supposed to die he was supposed to die in that he was supposed to live yeah i know and yeah. he was so scared to even come out and talk about this 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 conference was the first time he ever spoke on it yeah and i mean they they really screwed him up i mean he was on drugs he was homeless mm -hmm. um i guess his his wife ended up finding him yeah. after two years of being on the streets i mean this 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 guy think about it you are happy. You are happy within your family. Yeah. You're with your dad. You guys are close. You guys are having a ball. You got money. Everything's good. No, no worries. And then you see something that you don't even really realize that you're not supposed to see. It's just mm -hmm. something. And the next day, your dad cusses at you. That's the last sentence you ever hear from your dad. Yeah. And you never see him again until he's on his deathbed from cancer of, I think he had cancer of the liver and cancer of something else. And he never smoked or drank, I guess, in his no. whole life. No. And he said he was unrecognizable when he saw his dad, that he was literally like, I don't know, 90 pounds, 90 pounds. withering away with all this cancer in his body. Yeah. Multiple types of cancer. Yeah, yeah. Which is extremely rare for you to get multiple types of cancer simultaneously, all hitting stage four at the same time. I know. It's, it's really crazy. So yeah. think about what had to happen to the dad in that situation for him to cut his son off. Yeah. And that wasn't good enough for them. Yeah. They still had to they end. still try to have to end him. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's it's really, really awful stuff that happens every single day. Every yeah. day. This is not just that one story. I mean, this is there's thousands of stories probably like that happening all the time. So it's like we got we have to do better. We have to spread the word. We have to, I mean, some of Dr. Greer's um comments where you know write your congressman you know make it known that this stuff is happening out here because some of the the government that heads over you know federal government they don't even know about this cia fbi they don't even know what happens is this is the process so the way the way it works is um there's always contracts available for private contractors and private corporations to create advanced technologies that can be utilized for weaponization right because they want to always weaponize anything they can get their hands on so the, the, the contracts are there. The contracts are funded by what? Tax dollars. So every year they siphon X amount of trillions of tax dollars into these black budget bank accounts, right? And then the people that are in control or have the capability of approving these contracts to private corporations that claim they can make this tech, uh, they're in bed with them. So they get some submarine money, right? Some under the under the under the water, under the table money to approve these contracts. And these contracts go out and these private corporations begin developing these advanced technologies with no congressional oversight whatsoever. No congressional oversight, no oversight at all. Uh, and what happens is, as they as they're creating these uh, projects and building this technology and testing it out, 
of course, they try to compartmentalize it to a lot to where everyone doesn't know exactly what they're doing, even the people working on them. But every now and then, somebody sees a little bit too much. Somebody hears a little bit too much. And what makes it an illegal operation is the fact that then these people sometimes get suicided or mm. they get their lives taken away or they get loved ones taken away or, or they, they get threats jail. or they go to jail. Mm -hmm. Right. And so these, this is what makes these illegal operations. And so the premise behind the law century is to expose this and showcase this and show them that this can no longer continue to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, and share the wealth. I mean, the knowledge of this technology can literally wipe out poverty. Mm -hmm. Literally, we could be living in a golden age. Yeah. We could be. Yeah. We could be. I mean, we have this small percentage of people, and I mean really small percentage of people that are controlling everything on this planet. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah. Yeah, anyhow. Wild. Yes, um, Dr. Stephen Greer is, is um, premiering The Lost Century in Los Angeles on July 8th. 8 p.m. PT PST. I said PTSD. I'm in mental health mode. <laughs> What's up, Jackie? Hey, Jackie. Um, yeah. So, um, if you guys are in Los Angeles or you want to fly out, I mean, this is going to be a life changing historical premiere. I mean, it's it's just so important. This information is just so important. Yeah, it's important to get out. And I mean, these tickets are ten. You know, if you just want to be in the house, it's ten dollars. Yes. <laughs> to come in and watch this live premiere. Yes. There are some high trick levels. You want to be in the VIP room with the celebrities is twenty five hundred dollars, and I think there's another. There was a there was a six hundred dollar VIP ticket, and then there's a twenty five hundred dollar ticket that will get you access to everything. Um, there is going to be a small get together afterwards with only the celebrities, and Dr. Stephen Greer and Billy will be there. So, um, yeah, that one is like all inclusive. But I just dropped the link, so if you guys want to check it out, you can go to the link and then see what packages there are. But literally, if you just want to come support the mission yeah. and see what's really happening behind the veil here. Um, it's ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yeah. Ten dollars. That's that's less than a a, a sandwich nowadays. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, lunch is always a hundred dollars every single day. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's peanuts, right? So my last question to you though, mm -hmm. what do you think? Okay, because you come from this industry, you've known all this stuff pretty much. I mean, how do you stay sane? Yeah. Because for me, for instance, you saw how I was shooken up after. I'm like, look, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this now. We gotta have this meeting. I got connections in politics. What are we doing? Because I, I don't, I, I stay very ignorant to certain things that I can't control. So, I mean, with this, for me, it changed the trajectory of what I'm doing, right? So, for you, how does that affect you mentally and spiritually, and just even with people in general? Because it's like there's so much bad happening behind the veil, yet, yet. Yeah, you just stay so positive and calm all the time. I don't get it. Well, you know, <laughs> I see the big picture. I see the, you know, the, the long game, you know, it's, as you hear people say that term, like, you know, when the people invest in things like that. I see the long term vision for humanity. Yeah. And initially, I did get frustrated. You know, I did go through my catastrophism phase. If that's even a word, right? Mm -hmm. Where I was like, man, what's going on here? Everything's going down the tubes. But then I got to a level consciously where I realized this is part of the process yeah, and that we're in the process of trying to become mature human beings. Yes. Now, I'm not talking about mature as in your age that you are. I'm talking about mature as a civilization on the planet. There's levels that you can get to. And right now we're at the baby level. We're still children, right? We're trying to become toddlers. That's how young we are right now. We're trying to become toddlers. And we've, we've advanced such an, a far uh, amount in, in a small period of time, we've gone from in a hundred years, we've gone from horse buggy and carriages to putting remote control cars on Mars to even now today, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are in interstellar space heading towards another galaxy. Yeah. So we've come a very, very long way in a hundred years, but we're still infantile up here consciously. And with some of these black budget projects that I knew about from years ago that were happening, at the time that I was finding out, we were only about, they were only about 50 years ahead of the general population. Mm -hmm. Now they're 300 years ahead. Wow. So if you can conceive what we did in 100 years, multiply that by, by three, and then you'll see how far advanced they are than us. Mm -hmm. And so I just said to myself, hey, look, we're going to figure out, we're going to figure out why it keeps doing that. And so I, I came to the realization like, okay, this is where we are as a civilization. It's a growing process. We have to now fight as hard as we can, which is what we're doing, to get 
through this phase of potential destruction. We've Humanity has reached a fork in the road. Mm -hmm. And getting crazed and frustrated and angry and pissed off is not going to help us get past that, you know, make the right decision to get past that, this, this hurdle. We have to make humanity pick the right the direction on that fork. We can go down the left or we can go down the right. Mm -hmm. If we go down the left, we're going to damnation. And I guarantee you that there are probably hundreds of thousands of dead planets in our galaxy, in the Milky Way galaxy. In other words, civilizations that rose and destroyed themselves. Mm -hmm. We don't want to become one of those planets. Yeah. We want to become a planet that gets past this hurdle, that begins to learn how to walk you know, as a civilization, that passes through the toddler phase, mm -hmm. and becomes an adolescent, and eventually becomes a full-grown being, right? Because mm -hmm. we're all one. And that's what the fight is really all about. And so what I found that by getting angry, frustrated, pissed off and all of that, it just slows me down from getting to my goal, which is continuing to time travel through consciousness and send out these waves and vibrations of cymatic frequencies by speaking it into existence and creating the future that we need to see on this planet. Yeah, I love that answer. That's a great answer. And that kind of reminded me of the Orville episode that we watched last night. Mm. And for anyone that, that has not seen Orville, I mean, watch Orville, but watch season one, episode 12, the last episode of season one, because wow, it literally explains this. And it helps me to be more understanding of where we're at as a society instead of being upset. Because just like you said, like it's just like human development. It's a fractal, right? Yeah. Maybe you will crawl, then you walk, then you can run, then you can jump and all that other stuff. So it's literally the process of development. Yes. So there's going to be these horrible things happening within this process of development until people become more consciously mature. Mm -hmm. So it, it helps to, to um, you know, feel a little bit better about the process. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. yeah. Yes. Drop the link in there one more time if you have the link. Yes. If you guys want to go to this premiere in Los Angeles on July 8th, I mean, this is going to is his historical. And Limp Biscuit is actually the narrator and he'll be there, um, which is cool. That's cool. Limp I know. I used to Limp Biscuit back yeah. when I was like in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you when I used to listen to Oh man! <laughs> but anyway, he he was uh he's cool uh, and he's got a great voice, so I'm glad they chose him to yeah, do this narration. Yeah. Um, and you know we hope hopefully we'll see you at the movie theater. Yes, hopefully we see you guys there. Yeah. July 8, 8 p.m. on the red carpet. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a good event. Mm -hmm. I know Dr. Stephen Greer is gonna be there, dropping some knowledge as well. Um, and yeah, yeah, yes, Fred Durst, Fred Durst, Biscuit, Fred yeah, Durst. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lost Century. Yes. You know, one thing before we sign off, I'm going to tell you guys something very interesting. You probably didn't even know this. Scientists and anthropologists were researching um, civilizations coming out of the Renaissance. They discovered something interesting. Believe it or not, during the Renaissance rise of technology, during the era of the Arabs in the 1800s, we would have been on track to go to the moon in the 1800s. Think about mm -hmm. that. What wow. stopped it? Roman Catholicism stopped wow. it. The spread of the, you know, the Inquisition and the Papal Inquisitions, which pretty much denounced and forced down all and any technologies and suppressed advanced technologies from happening mm -hmm. and slowed the progress of man down. Similar to what's happening right now in this current era, with these black budget technologies that are holding us back that we because because why they've been suppressed from us but interesting we could have been on the moon in the 1800s wow so imagine where we would be now without religious dogma mm. and zealots and governments man and all this kind of crazy stuff yeah. we'd be taking vacations to go see the rings of saturn right now yeah 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 i know amazing but we can still do it but we have to work together Mm -hmm. Divide and conquer tactics out the window. It's time for us to come together and work together. Stop, stop dividing. Yeah. They they try to throw all these issues that aren't really issues at us and and divide us. Mm -hmm. The people that like are supposed to be coming together. They're yes. they're literally creating all these little things with stupid, stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, belief systems like religions. It's, it's like all these things are skin color, the way your yeah. eyes shaped. Oh, I don't like you because of this. It's like, no, no, no. We have to come together, all of us, so we can fight the real, real evil out here. Yeah, the real evil. <laughs> the yeah. real evil, the real enemy. Yeah. It's not us. No, it's not. It's a very small group of people 
that control 8 billion. Less than 100 families control 8 billion people. Yeah. Shame on us mm -hmm. because we've allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. How? Our collusion is based on our acceptance of their rules and, and their guidelines. Yeah. As long as we play their game, we're in full collusion with the atrocities that they commit against us. It's like a narcissistic codependent relationship. Yes. That's basically what it is because we allow it to happen. We're mm -hmm. allowing all this to happen and we're falling for their manipulation mm -hmm. and we're fighting each other. They keep us busy getting <laughs> mad at each other over stupid things like yeah. I just mentioned. So we can't, we, we get distracted away from the real evil out there, the things that are really bad. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's time for change. It's time for change. <laughs> yeah. Drop the link one more time before we sign off. This was a quick pop-up podcast. Of course, tomorrow night we got the Forbidden Knowledge podcast. I have an amazing one-hour and 15-minute interview with Merkaba13. He's an amazing human being. You're going to love this interview. We went deep into the trials and tribulations behind manifesting. We all you know about manifesting and manifesting your best life, and it's all good, and it's bliss, and it's all great. We're going to talk about that, too. But also, what are some of the downsides? What are some of the side effects of things that can happen to you during the manifestation process, and how do you deal with them? That's going to be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. right here on this YouTube account. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be an amazing podcast. I'm looking forward to that one. I'll be in the live chat as well. Mm-hmm. Gonna be awesome, guys. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you everybody for joining us for this quick pop up. Please try to make it to the premiere. Support this mission. It's such an important mission. It's life changing, and yeah, I, I can't wait to see all you guys there. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Hey, we're signing off right tonight. Peace. Yes. Make sure you share this. Make sure you click the like button. All right. Peace. Forbidden. Not oh, gang sign. Not, it's not a gang sign. I guarantee you. It ain't a gang.